morning kids it's Karen Lee here back with another edition of Karen Reads um, this morning we have a book called Christina Katarina and the Box it's written by Patricia Lee Gout G-A-U-C-H She's written 39 children's books. You can go to her website. And it's interesting because the website talks, she talks about how she became a writer, what she read when she was a child. She loved the book Millions of Cats. And I bet pretty much all of you have read Millions of Cats. So go look her up. It's illustrated by Doris Byrne, B-U-R-N. She lived for most of her life on an island off the coast of the state of Washington. And um, she did most of her illustrations at night after her kids had gone to bed. And she had to do them by lantern light because there was no electricity on the island. So she had a really interesting life and raised a bunch of kids as well as illustrating a bunch of stuff. All right. Patricia Lee Gouch dedicated this book to Christina, her daughter. So she named it after her daughter, Christina Katerina and the Box. Christina Katerina liked things. Tin cups and old dresses, worn out ties and empty boxes, any of those things, but mostly boxes. Hat boxes, bakery boxes with see-through lids, shoe boxes. You can see her big collection of boxes. Best of all, she liked big boxes. So she was happy indeed one sleepy summer day when even her sometimes friend Fats Watson was out of town to see a truck deliver a great tall box. It came around a refrigerator. Oh, how grand and new, Christina's mother said, looking at the refrigerator. Oh, it is, it really is, said Christina, looking at the box. That's a big box. And Christina quickly claimed the box for her own and dragged it under the apple tree. To mother, who was very neat and tidy, it seemed that boxes were for basements or trash barrels, not for front yards under apple trees. But she decided that it couldn't hurt it couldn't possibly hurt for one day or two to have the big box in the front yard there under the apple tree. You can see Christina looking at the box and thinking. You'll see what a great imagination she has as we go through the book. That afternoon, Christina's father cut a window and a door in the box, and Christina painted on turrets, a drawbridge, and bolts for the door. And the box became a castle. Inside, she put sticks on the window for iron bars, and she brought in all her cups and saucers and a lot of Fig Newtons in case there was a battle and she couldn't get out. Fig Newton is a kind of cookie so she wanted to have plenty of cookies. For two days, she and her bears lived and played in the castle peacefully. And if you can notice, her crown, 
She must be a queen in the castle. Her crown is made out of a lamp lampshade uh, tipped upside down on her head. And you see her toy bears having tea with her. And I think that boy might be Fats Watson back from out of town. Until Fats Watson came home, he sneaked into her castle while she was out to lunch and ate all her Fig Newtons. And she locked him in until he hollered, I'm sorry, 15 times. When she finally let him out, Fats gave Christina's castle a kick and over it went smack on its side. Mother came out and saw the fallen box. I see that's the end of the castle, Christina, she said with a smile and started to haul it away. But that's no castle, said Christina, hauling it back again. That's my clubhouse. And it was for three long days, right there under the apple tree. Christina changed the window into a door and the door into a window. She put in two benches for members and a chair for the president and she painted, keep out, members only and danger to enemies on the outside. And she let Fats join. Then they met in the clubhouse, which was very dark when the door was closed and very secret. And they spit on a nickel and swore to be friends forever. And they were. Until one day, Fats got angry at always being vice president. He climbed on the clubhouse roof and promised to sit there until Christina made him president. Only the roof caved in first and Christina disbanded the club. When mother saw the sat in box, she brushed her hands together. Now she would have her nice neat yard. Well, she said, that is the end of the clubhouse. And she dragged it toward the street. That's no clubhouse, said Christina, tucking it back again. That's my racing car and I'm late for a race. Before speeding off, Christina put the top on the bottom, turned the window into a cockpit, and on the sides painted two magnificent curling silver horns, which she blasted at Fats every time she rounded the apple tree. You can see the flag and the insignia on the side show that it's car number 13. It says, go man, go, and she named it Tiger. She's got a racing hat on.
For two days, she raced around the yard and won every time. Until Fats said he'd take a look at the motor, that it didn't sound quite right. Oh, he's got a mischievous look on his face. When he cut off the nose to get at the motor, the car collapsed. Christina's mother was relieved. Well, that is the end of the racing car, she said, and she pulled the cardboard toward the trash barrel. But that's no racing car, said Christina, pulling it back again. That's the floor of my summer mansion, and I'm going to have a ball. And she did, right there under the apple tree. She patted the box out flat and drew furniture on each flap. A stove and a refrigerator for the kitchen, a bed for the bedroom, and a grand piano and a violin for the living room so there would be music for her ball. Then she and her bears and fats dressed up in gowns and high heels, and they invited kings and queens and some presidents and one vice president to come. And everybody came, and they danced and danced until their feet hurt and they had to take off their shoes. Even without shoes, Christina had a wonderful time. I love her gown. Until Fats decided the floor needed scrubbing, he sprayed it down with the garden hose and mopped it until the floor puckered and grew lumpy and finally fell apart. When Mother came out a little later and looked at her front yard, she shook her head and said, Well, and then, is this the end of your grand floor? What floor? asked Christina, who was running by. Oh, do you mean that old ragged box? Let's do throw it away. Mother breathed a sigh. At last she could have her nice neat yard. But quick, Christina said. Fat's mother got a washer and dryer today, and he's bringing two ships down now. I said my mother wouldn't mind a bit if we sailed them here in our front yard, right under our apple tree. There is Fats with two new big boxes. And there's Fats and Christina in their ships. So she's a girl with a lot of imagination. And she had a lot of fun with two empty boxes, three. Um, you probably are having to use your imagination during these days to create 
all kinds of imaginary scenarios, um, all kinds of imaginary stories. Uh, so I hope you are doing that. I hope you're creating some interesting things together and finding ways to pass the time besides watching me and hanging out with me. Okay, good to see you today. Um, take care until next time. All right, bye-bye.